And it's my greatest pleasure to, uh, uh, to introduce Francesca Morale. Uh, she is a postdoctoral researcher in the Team Clausen Group at IMP in Vienna and a member of Beringer Ingenheim Discovery Research uh, Global Postdoc Program. Her research focuses on establishing um, targeted protein degradation technology in bacteria by reprogramming components of bacteria protein degradation pathway. Prior joining the Clausen lab, uh, she was a joint postdoc between the uh, Helen Walden uh, lab and Professor uh, Alessio Cooley lab in, in Dundee. Uh, we are very happy to, to have you here and we are very much looking forward to your seminar. Uh, many thanks, uh, Mikolai, for this introduction and also uh, to you and the organizers for inviting me uh, today to this uh, fantastic webinar series that uh, I really, really like. So I would like to present to you today my postdoc project um, so that I uh, started when I joined Team Clausen Group at the IMP in Vienna, which is about targeted protein degradation in bacteria. So we'll start by telling you something that you already know, that is the ability to control cellular level of certain protein of interest uh, through chemical molecules that we call degraders is extremely interesting from different point of view. Um, so not only from pharmaceutical applications, so we all know that products are now entering the clinic and emerging as a valid alternative and very promising alternative to inhibitors to target undruggable proteins. Um, but also from the point of view of basic research uh, with uh, the auxin inducible degrant being used for uh, inducing uh, protein depletion in order to observe phenotype and uh, dissect the function of certain proteins. And the way these degraders work is to bind on one side a protein of interest that you can see here called POI and directing them to cellular degradation pathways. So this have been done, has been done in eukaryotic cell by hijacking the ubiquitin proteasome pathway and more recently also other pathways uh, such as autophagy or uh, the lysosome. So when I started my postdoc project, uh, we asked the question, how about bacteria? How do we go from here to here inducing protein degradation through a chemical molecule. So what we did is um, look at how uh, bacteria deal with, with the protein degradation and try to find a way to hijack this pathway. So when I joined the Clausen lab, a major focus of research uh, was a protein degradation pathway, which is based on arginine phosphorylation. So this is specific to uh, bacteria. And a kinase called MCSP is able to phosphorylate arginine residues on substrate. You can see here the structure of a phosphorylated arginine residue. And these phosphorylated substrates are then directed to the CLIPTP complex. So this is a proteolytic complex, which is present in gram-positive bacteria and in mycobacteria, which recognizes phosphorylated substrate and also other substrates and is composed by uh, CLIP-C, which is an hexameric unfoldase, which has N terminal domains that are um, needed to recognize substrates. So, it, so substrates are recognized by the N terminal domains of CLIP-C, then unfolded via the hexameric CLIP-C, and then degraded by the protease, uh, which is CLIP-P, and that you can see here. So when we were uh, thinking about strategies to hijack this pathway, one option that comes to mind is first to hijack the uh, tagging machinery. So um, if you think about the equivalent system in the ubiquitin proteasome system, this would be our E3 ligase, which is riding the degradation tag on substrate. And another option could be to directly hijack the CLIP-CP complex, which you can imagine as a simplified equivalent of the eukaryotic proteasome. However, there are no ligands, no small molecules ligands um, binding, clip, binding MCSP that are uh, known. Um, instead, we know that uh, phosphoarginine binds to the N-terminal domain of uh, CLIP-C. And so we thought that for a proof of concept, this could be used um, 
to see if we can design bifunctional small molecules that are able to induce degradation of protein of interest. So this was our uh, plan, our strategy to, des to design bacterial products as bifunctional small molecules that on one side bind to the N-terminal domains of click C and on the other side bind to our protein of interest. And I want to highlight once more that the CLIP-CP complex is present in gram-positive and myocobacteria, and in particular Staphylococcus aureus, which is uh, on the global priority list of antibiotic-resistant bacteria of the World Health Organization, and mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is still the second leading infectious killer after COVID-19. So when we think about future potential application of this technology, antibiotic development is certainly one of them. So, um, however, at the beginning of this project, um, we wanted to test the feasibility of this approach. So our proof of in our proof of concept, we first looked at ligands of CLIP-C. So um, this is one of them, as I said previously, phosphorylated arginine residues, which are able to bind the terminal domain of CLIP-C, and you can see the crystal structure here. And the advantage for using phosphoarginine is that there is a direct link to degradation. So we know that interaction with these sites will induce degradation of substrate. And also uh, another advantage is that phosphoarginine is binding to different bacteria. On the other hand, another ligand of CLIP-C is um, represented here and is called cyclomarine A. So it's a cyclic peptide. Uh, you can see the chemical structure here. And it binds to a different site on CLIP-C NTD compared to phosphorylated arginine. And it only binds to mycobacteria. However, on the other hand, the advantage is uh, cell permeability. So we know that this compound is cell permeable and enters mycobacteria. And it's also more stable chemically compared to uh, phosphoarginine, which is uh, easily hydrolyzed. Regarding the protein of interest, for our proof of concept, we decided to first focus on some easily tractable system in terms uh, of proteins for which we know um, the crystal structure of uh, a protein ligand uh, complex. And these ligands are well characterized. And for this ligand also, um, it's known that can be functionalized and incorporated into a uh, bifunctional uh, small molecule without losing the affinity. So this was the uh, reason for choosing um, uh, initially monomeric streptavidin and um, binding to biotin and a bromo domain binding to the ligand uh, JC1. So here I'm showing you uh, one of the first systems we studied. So um, phosphoarginine and biogen um, are the components of our first back product that you can see represented here. So um, in this back product, these two um, moieties are connected via a linker. And um, what I first did is to test if this compound can mediate ternary complex formation uh, so here you can see the size exclusion chromatography in uh, which monomeric streptavidin and the NTD of CLIP-C elute separately when there is no compound. When I add our back product, instead a complex is formed in which you can see both proteins. So ternary complex formation is formed. However, uh, the main question was, can we induce degradation by simply inducing proximity of this um, protein that is uh, not uh, substrate of the clip cp system. So in order to answer this question, uh, I reconstituted the clip cp system from Bacillus subtilis in vitro and set up this biochemical assay in which I incubate the component together. And then you can see here the result of this degradation assay on an SDS pair. So this is not a blot, but you can see the different proteins. So clip C, clip P that are uh, stable in the presence of the back product and instead monomeric streptavidin is indeed degraded. So in the presence of 100 micromolar back product, I could see selective degradation, which was um, uh, an extremely good uh, result uh, for our proof of concept study. However, degradation was only observed at 100 micromolar. So one of the main questions for me um, was if um, structural features of uh, the protein influence uh, degradability. And in order to start answering this question, I decided to create some fusion constructs. 
between monomeric streptavidin and um, other bacterial proteins. So in this way, I want to keep constant the affinity of the back product for the target protein and varying the target protein features. And you can see here some of the proteins that I selected that are bacterial proteins uh, with the aim of making this protein more degradable. And so these are the alpha fold models of the predicted uh, structure. So when I tested uh, in vitro degradation of this fusion protein, I could observe that indeed degradation efficiency is greatly influenced by the structural features of the protein. And we identified the substrate that is this fusion protein here between monomeric streptavidin and CRE, which was very efficiently degraded in the presence of uh, the back product. So now I also want to tell you how we use this back product um, as a chemical tool um, to study uh, CLIPC. Um, because um, something I didn't mention is that CLIPC is present inside the bacterial cell um, in an inactive state in bacillus subtilis. So it's forming a decamer because, as you can imagine, uncontrolled proteolysis would damage uh, the cell. Uh, however, in the presence of our back product and substrate, we can clearly see activation. So it was fair to hypothesize that CLIPC forms an active hexamer in the presence of our back product and substrate protein. So I wanted to uh, visualize the structure of this active complex because at the time of this study, there was no available structure of CLIPC in its active and substrate bound state. And uh, when I started performing cryo-EM studies, it became clear immediately that the complex that was formed was not a single hexamer, but was something uh, much bigger that you can see here in the 2D class averages. So the complex looked something more like this. So four hexamer coming together around the substrate to degrade target uh, substrate. And you can see here the 3D uh, reconstruction of this tetramer of CPC hexamer. So the resolution of this was not um, enough to um, build an atomic model. However, when I focus the EM analysis on the single hexamers, you can see that the uh, map is um, defined much better. And although unfortunately I could not see the terminal domain binding to the product and the protein of interest uh, on CLIPC, I could see a very well defined core of CLIPC with a substrate peptide being thread through. So I could observe the, and um, build the first model of an active CLIPC binding to a uh, substrate. And going back to our proof of concept study, what I showed uh, so far are results with Bacillus subtilis CLIPC. And so the other question that we ask is, can we also degrade proteins through the CLIPCP complex of mycobacteria. So I use the same uh, back product and substrate, and I, we could observe that indeed degradation is also possible with the mycobacterial CLIPCP. And this opened uh, new uh, possibilities for our studies, because as I mentioned previously, uh, when talking about mycobacteria, there are other binders known for the terminal domain. So not only phosphargine, but other compounds, and among them, is a cyclomarine A binding to a different site here. So our um, chemist uh, collaborators um, started designing some simplified analogs of uh, sim A, and uh, you can see here one of them that was then chosen to design back products, which bound with um, a good affinity to the N-terminal domain of CLIPC. And um, our lab also obtained the crystal structure of uh, this analog binding um, to uh, CIPC. And uh, um, based on this, we also designed a linker attachment point. And this was our second back product in which we connect the cyclomarine analog to biotin. And when we tested this again in vitro, we could observe again degradation, which was comparable to the phosphargene based back product. And so this was a very good result because we could show that also anchoring our back product to a different site compared to phosphargine, we could um, achieve uh, degradation. So this is very important for the future of uh, this field, I believe. And um, so I want to briefly show you another system that we uh, studied, um, that is um, changing the 
UI recruiting moiety to JQ1 to degrade um, Abromo domain that you can see here. So um, these are new back product uh, can again uh, degrade um, uh, BRDT uh, BD1, as you can see here from our assay in vitro. This degradation is a specific and can be competed out uh, with the um, head group composing the product. And another thing we did with this uh, GQ1 based back product is to um, see if we can have degradation also inside bacterial cells. So for this, um, we expressed BRDT BD1 uh, in the mycobacteria and then treated mycobacteria with a compound um, and analyzed um, the results with um, capillary Western blot and uh, using uh, proteomics. So you can see here the results of the quantification of uh, BRDT upon treatment with different concentration of our back product, and uh, we could see that there was indeed degradation of the RDT, and this was um, not the case when using the separate uh, head groups. And uh, another thing we tested was uh, if degradation was a selective at the proteomic uh, level, or if uh, it was coming from a global remodeling of the proteome, because there are some reports that um, highlight uh, cyclomarin A as a deregulator of TIP. So when we did proteomics, we uh, observed that um, BRDT-BD1 is uh, selectively degraded. So this was um, an encouraging result and um, um, highlighting that the back product induces selective degradation of BRDT-BD1 also in bacterial cells. So uh, this brings me to my summary. So today I've uh, showed you how um, we have um, we have obtained a proof of concept study showing that uh, targeted protein degradation is also feasible in bacteria, and targeted protein degradation can be achieved by bifunctional small molecules that bring protein of interest to the HIPCP complex. And back products have also allowed capturing an active state of uh, the CLIPC oligomer and uh, solving the first structure of CLIPC bound to a substrate uh, via cryo EM. And uh, outlook, um, there is um, a lot that can be done with this technology. We just have to um, explore it. And one of the potential uh, applications is, um, for example, to create. Uh, BRDT fusion proteins and to induce selective degradation of BRDT fusion proteins in mycobacteria um, using our back product to generate conditional knockdowns. And um, the other application is, of course, to develop bacterial proteins, uh, bacterial products that are targeting directly bacterial proteins and explore their application as um, antibiotics. And with this, I would like to thank um, the whole team, the whole Clausen uh, lab in particular team um, for giving me the opportunity to work on this uh, exciting project and all the people that I listed here of the Clausen lab that have uh, given a special contribution to this project and without them, this uh, would have not been uh, possible. And I would like also to thank our collaborators, especially our collaborators in Germany for synthesizing all the molecules that I showed today, our collaborators um, at uh, Beringer Ingelheim and um, all of you for your attention. And uh, I would be happy to take any questions.